All right, welcome back to the cybersecurity track. Thank you so much for SH for the, such an intense and exciting workout uh, for this afternoon. Well, welcome back to the cybersecurity track. For the next session, we'll be having Mr. Clement and also Ms. Mera and Ms. Priyanka to show us a demo demonstration marathon for live hacking. So whenever you're ready, Mr. Clement, over to you. OK, thank you, Lai. Um, hi, guys. Um, welcome back. Good afternoon. Just in case you're having your lunch, bon appetit while you watch and enjoy a few hacking demos. So whatever I actually presented earlier in my um, accession of uh, cyber kill chain, we're going to show you some demos in that kill chain. How would they start uh, in collecting your information and how they can actually use your mobile phone or your computer to hack into your devices and take over your identity and all your data. So that's the whole objective. So I hand over here now. I'm, I'm not uh, showing any screen now. I'm actually handing over to Priya, who will be actually starting the demo sessions and then we will be joining in and we'll be switching in between Priya, Mira and myself and then back to Mira. So we will work on it until two o'clock and then at two o'clock we will have the next session. Okay guys, let's get started. So we have jam packed next to next kind of a thing. If, if you don't understand anything, we can always explain that in our question and session. Uh, Priya, all over to you. Thank you, Clement. Hello everyone. Good morning to our Indian friends and good afternoon to my fellow Malaysians. Welcome to a live hacking demo session my name is Priyanka and I'll be kicking off this live hacking demo session today. To start off, I'm going to demonstrate the first step in the cyber kill chain process, reconnaissance or otherwise known as information gathering. The aim of this demo is to find a victim with an email address and a phone number. Once we've gotten a hold of these two information, let's see what are all the attacks that an attacker can perform with just having these two information in hand. This is what we're going to see in the whole live hacking session today. There are many, many ways to gather information about a person, business or domain. We have Multigo or even Google for that fact to get information. But today I'm going to use an unusual tool, a tool that is meant for business marketing and lead generation purposes. I'm going to introduce you to a website called Hunter.io. Hunter.io is actually a lead generation website for marketing purposes used by Google, IBM, Microsoft, and many other big names. This website pulls out email addresses related to a particular domain. It was actually invented for business purposes, but from a hacker's perspective, this is a gold mine because you're guaranteed email addresses, and if you're lucky, you might just end up with some phone numbers to get in touch with potential victims. Now, let's get into Hunter.io. As you can see, I've signed up for a free plan over here. Let's search for any domains. In this case, I'm going to look out for Telecom Malaysia. It's a Malaysian telco company. So there we go. We have a total of 379 results, all exportable in CSV format. And you can see they split into three different categories over here. All combines personal and generic uh, email addresses. If you're looking for something more personal, then you click on personal. It's going to refine to email addresses that has staff names inside here. Moving on to generic, if, it's, if you're looking for something more non-specific but related to a domain, here you have a list of them. And over here, you can even refine this uh, search even further. It has departmental groupings. So we have 13 results from sales, five from support, two from finance and so on and so forth. Something more interesting is the source that you see over here. This refers to the number of places or sites that a particular work email address, address have been identified. In Nurul Aina's case, there's only one source that's talking about her email address. So let's quickly check it out. I'm going to open it in a new tab just to verify if it does have her email ID. So I'm going to look up for name and there we go. It's Nurul Aina Nadzir from Telecom Malaysia and this is the email address over here. 
So one source is still okay, but moving down, you see 20 plus 19 sources. This is all not so good, depending on which site um, this particular email ID was found. So I'm going to zoom into Ruslan Zakaria, see where his email ID, uh, ID was found. So as you can see, some of them were removed, but some of them are still existing in this particular blogging site, which is not so safe because, you know, you're not supposed to leave your work email address in places that, you know, you don't, if you don't want to find trouble, then you should not leave them in places like that. I think we all have more than enough uh, in our, on our plate. We shouldn't be doing these kind of things to invite danger. So let's take another example. Let's say I'm going to look for starhub.com. It's a Singaporean telco company. And here I have 115 results, also exportable in CSV format. And I'm now going to look for my victim. See if I can zoom in on a, a good one. And I'm going to refine my search to management. There's only one person under the management. I'm going to click on it. And there we go. We have Casey Fong. She's apparently the senior manager of Starhub. And we're lucky because we have a phone number. 19 sources that she's been, or this work email ID has been identified. So up until this, up until this point, there's no way of knowing if Casey is still active in Starhub, but how do you verify that she's still active and still working at Starhub? It's very simple. Head on to LinkedIn, and I'm going to search for Casey. Okay, we have a hit, and yes, there we go. This is Casey Fong, and yes, she's still attached to Starhub, but a pleasant, pleasant surprise is that she's no longer the senior executive. She recently got promoted to the assistant vice president, which is small useful for us because now her position is more important and she is still active in, Starbuck, in Starhub. So now that we have an email address and a phone number, let's see what a hacker is capable of with just these two information. My colleague Mira is going to demonstrate how WhatsApp can be used to compromise a victim. She's going to weaponize an image with a malware and send it to our victim Casey via WhatsApp. Since most of us use web WhatsApp while working, let's see what happens when the victim downloads the infected image. Mira, take it away. Thank you, Priya. Let me share my screen. Okay. Hi, everyone. So nowadays, WhatsApp, Telegram, Skype, Facebook Messenger, a common messaging application that we are using every day in our smartphones or even our laptops. And we receive tons of forwarded messages with pictures from our friends and also our families. Have you ever thought the possibility of these forwarded images carrying a virus or a malware within them that could actually compromise our devices and give total access to the hacker? Let me show you guys how a simple infected picture can take whole machine down. In this case, as how Priya showed, Cassie Fong will be our, our victim as we already got her number. So I going to sh uh, I going to send out her infected picture to her WhatsApp. So I already created this picture, which is already infected. This is a very uh, uh, genuine looking picture. So let me go and go to WhatsApp web because normally when you're busy and you're in an office, you tend to use WhatsApp web instead. So that's how with Cassie Fong as well. So Cassie Fong, I'm going to attach the infected picture in my desktop. So this is the picture COVID-19 latest update. So I'm sending it to her. So let us see what happened in her WhatsApp. So this is mine and her WhatsApp. OK, she received the infected image. So as a commoner, when we receive an image, uh, no matter it's from your friends or family or even from unknown numbers, we tend to download it and actually look look at the image. So Cassie Fong doing the same thing, downloading the image, save file and go to the folder and she going to click the picture and she doesn't know what what actually runs behind this picture earlier i already uh, created a listener a listener means uh, when you attach a payload it will uh, it will it will help us to connect 
to the victim machine. So this is my Kali machine. Okay, this is my Kali machine. Can you guys see? Matter practice session one open. It means that we are already in the victim's machine. So what all we can do with, uh, what, all, what are the attacks we can do? So to make sure that I am, I'm in the victim machine, I want to know the system info. So sys info, enter. So yeah, we are, uh, we are already in the victim machine. It runs Windows 10 and it's a work group laptop. Okay, so what are the all other attacks we can do? So we have webcam chat, webcam list, webcam stream and hash dump. So now I'm going to show you guys key scan dump. So what does key scan dump does is uh, whenever the victim types anything, uh, let's say the victim want to uh, bang in, I mean, uh, transfer money online. She goes to the CIMB, clicks, and there she key in her bank uh, user ID and the password. We can grab it. So let me show. But in this case, I'm going to show you in Notepad. Key scan start. Okay. We have started this key scan. So let me type in. Let me type in, so let's say she's tapping in to her Gmail account. Okay, say form, say form at gmail.com and a password, one, two, three, A, B, C, D. Okay, Just now let us see what Kali Linux has have for us. Key scan dump. Okay, can you guys see? It has actually picked up the email address and as well as the password. So let me move in to my next attack. So when an attacker is already in the victim's machine and he wants to monitor the, the machine 24-7 of what she's doing and uh, what are all the activities, the attacker can use screen share screen share screen share okay it will actually share the victim screen so for us the windows 10 will be the victim and kali machine is the attacker so it's get sharing the screen so can you guys see here the screen is sharing so whatever you are doing it will go back to the hacker so always uh, off your auto download and never download any pictures from unknown numbers. So that's it from my side. I'm passing it to Mr. Clement for, for more demos. Thank you. Thanks, Mira. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm back. Right. Uh, so let me share my screen. I have two quick demos for you. I have actually two quick demos for you before I actually pass it to Mira, if the time permits, um, as we need to finish it by two o'clock. Um, so let's get started, guys. Um, so I'm actually sharing my screen. I have two quick demos. Let me explain. Okay, this is where I stopped earlier, right? So uh, that's where I've actually stopped. And uh, I have my Kali that is sitting and waiting for me. Right, uh, and I have my phone uh, that I'm going to actually put up over here. So I'm going to show you two quick demos, my dear friends. I'm going to show um, a live hacking on a, on a Samsung Note 10 Plus phone. That's what this is my own phone, and that's where all the charts are coming in. And from stuff, this is my own phone. Um, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to uh, take over um, a phone. So I'll be showing you an Android. Later, Pat, uh, in a session, he will show you iPhone. Okay, so that way we have covered uh, both uh, devices. So ignore all those pop-ups that you can see on over here, right? But before getting into the phone, I'm gonna get into another demo, guys. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you here is a simple, what we called as, as a drive-by download attack. Now, what is this drive-by download? 
a lot of people believe that for them to get infected, they need to download a file. Not necessarily. If you are browsing a website, you might get infected. Not only on your computer, you might also get infected on our mobile phone. Are we having enough defenses in our mobile phone? If you're thinking, I leave that to be answered by Pat later. But now, the thing is very simple, guys. If uh, a website is infected, let's take a very simple analogy. Okay, before I show you the demo, uh, a very simple analogy. A lot of us go and read online newspapers today. What happens? And 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 you can see in all these online newspapers, there's a lot of advertisements that come on the newspaper. And I don't see and I don't know uh, anyone. I've tried few, but uh, all those newspapers did not even ask question. What is that in the image? They just put up the image as it is right across the region. I've tried this across the region, not only in Malaysia. So I can sign up for an advertisement package, pay three thousand five thousand dollars and I put up an image on the online newspaper site for a month. This is what happens. So I take an image. I put a malware inside the image like what Mira showed you and I upload it as an advertisement in the newspaper site. Everyone who goes to the newspaper when the advertisement image is loaded on the right, the malware is going to get injected into the computer or the mobile phone. That's called as drive by download, my dear friends. That's what is called as drive by download. You don't have to do anything by you browsing the website you get infected as an hacker. If you want to take over 100,000 people, he doesn't have to go and and knock at the doors of 100,000 people and hack 100,000 people go and compromise one platform that allows 100,000 people to come in. The ideal place is newspaper online newspaper site where everyone goes and checks and if you have put up an advertisement in the leading online newspaper site. That's it. You get 60,000, 70,000, 100,000 people within few days as they come up and you this. So whenever you're browsing on websites, be careful what you're doing because any of those advertisements on the right might be a malware and it's called as malvertising. OK, malware advertising or advertisements with malware is called as malvertising. In this demo, I'm going to show you one quick stuff. I'm going to clone Facebook, right? Like um, and and we can send an email to anyone, right? Whether Casey or whether anyone. OK, sorry. Um, I, 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 just to clarify over here, uh, Mira had actually created another phone number and and she has used the Casey Fong name to actually show the continuity on the story. We did not hack into Casey Fong's phone and uh, and it wasn't Casey Fong's computer that got infected. Just a clarification. That's for a storyboard that she has used the same name there. So you can feel that that is possible. So it was only um, a depicted one. Casey was not harmed. Casey Fong's uh, mobile phone or computer was not hacked. So that's a, a disclaimer. If you have if you felt it that way when you saw the demo earlier by by Mira. OK, that's just a disclaimer for you uh, because these all are getting uh, recorded and it's going to be live available from YouTube's there afterwards. I don't want people to make uh, an assumption that we hacked into Casey Fong's mobile number, right? OK, now let's get on to this over here, guys. So let me go on to this menu driven one social engineering attack uh, website attack vector and there are tons and tons of attacks over here. I'm going to go for Java applet attack over here because why Java? Java runs on a whole lot of uh, platforms today. Even in your mobile phones, Java runs. So to Cycloner, no. And my IP address is 192.168.40.128. Let's move on. I'm not going to actually go and create my own self signed certificate. It might take a little bit of time. We don't have that much. We have more demos to come in. So I'm going to actually put as a built in applet. So number two, hit enter. And I'm going to put Facebook.com. So we're going to clone Facebook and we're going to send email as it's coming from Facebook. So now this is injecting a Java applet into the cloned Facebook. Again, don't get it wrong. We are not inserting malware into the original Facebook. Clone Facebook and some obfuscation so that antivirus goes in a topsy-turvy um, topsy curve. 
So look at this, guys. This is what I told you in my earlier sessions. People nowadays, they go for memory injections where antivirus do not protect. OK, most of the time. Number one, memory injection. Port number 443. Why? Most of your firewalls will not inspect port number 443 because it's an encrypted traffic. The bad guys knows where is our loopholes, where are our cracks, and then they use it against us. 443. Now, since I said 443 it is giving me HTTPS, I don't want to set up a whole lot of other things. So I'm going to go for reverse TCP number one. It enter and it actually creates. Look at it. It, it actually runs on Windows, Linux, and OS X. Pretty much it, it creates packages for different types of devices and the operating system. So anyone that opens in any of that, damn, gone straight, and they get actually hooked on to a hacker's hook. So after this is actually get done, we will go into a victim machine for for simpler purposes. I've just taken a Windows Server okay, machine. It can be any machine for that matter, right? It doesn't mean that, oh, it only works on this particular server version and it doesn't work on others. It pretty much works on every other versions. So back over here on the on my Windows Server uh, machine, I'm actually putting an IP address because it's inside my computer. When I'm sending a, an attack across in an email, I would have put this machine, my hacker machine, on the public IP address with the domain that might look like facebook.com. For example, I open this, it opens up the clone Facebook website, guys. So the clone Facebook website gets opened up over here. They are not here to do phishing. They are not here to do user ID and password grab. They are inserting a malware behind this clone. So that's what I told you earlier. Whenever you receive an email as if it's coming from World Health Organization or some kind of COVID-19 related stuff, don't open that email. I if you ask me, I'll, I'll give you a simple tips for, for protecting yourself. Don't open any email or don't click on that link if it comes from your banks. Banks will never send you an email with a link to click. If it's any financial organization, for example, including your insurances, if you receive an email from any of them, don't click because that's not sent by them. Banks and insurances and financial institutions will not send you an email with a link. Second, don't open any emails or don't click on the links or open any attachment if it comes from any of your social media websites, right? And don't open anything if it comes from so-called as any COVID-19 related. There is 2000 percent increase in COVID-19 related attacks on computers and mobile phones, guys. Don't open anything that actually comes in an email with an attachment or a link regarding COVID-19. If you do these three things, you would have avoided most of the attacks, right? Now, let's say that someone clicked on that email that came from Facebook. Look like Facebook. Now I have a pop up window. You look at this pop up window. You can't close this browser now because there is a modal pop up window as we call it as everything in this pop up window can be configured. This can be what Oracle Corporation. This can be from Oracle Corporation or whatever, and this can be Java update. It might look like a Java update. So the moment you click on run, you are giving extra permissions. You remember in the cyber kill chain, Earlier in my session, I explained to you about privilege escalation. I've, I will now show you a privilege escalation, right? So run, cancel, or click. A lot of people will say, Clement, I don't click on run. I'll click on cancel or I click on close. Guys, a hacker has come all the way to your computer. Do you really think he's going to give an exit clause for you? No. This run, this cancel, this close, all of them are same. Anything you click over here, you're going to give the extra permission for that guy. The only way is right click on the task manager and you actually go to your start task manager and you kill it from here. You will not find this pop up window at all. There's a server manager here which is running here uh, over here. But other than that, this is only the browser. So the only way is to kill the browser. Do not try to close it from here because this itself is a malware window. There's again an awareness piece for you. A lot of people fall for this trap of clicking on cancel or close. Let's say someone actually clicked on some button either way. This site 
will flip you to the original Facebook site. Look at the URL now. You are now in the original Facebook site, which looked exactly like that earlier before. Now you will be able to log into your original Facebook. But that flip that happened with that window that has given a lot of privilege to the attacker. Now let's go to the attacker's machine. You look at over here as what Mira sh showed earlier. Now there is a metapreter session over here. We'll connect to it. We can do a lot of stuff. Okay. Now let's check what is my current permission. My current permission is an administrator permission. Now you look at this hash dump. That is to dump the database. SAM database is the database where you have all your user IDs and passwords stored on your computer, right? So can I now go and do an hash dump over here? No, it doesn't allow because it, it has a privilege problem here. An administrator cannot read the SAM database. It has to be a domain administrator. Cannot also know. It has to be a super administrator. Your system is the only one who can read the SAM database. So how do someone actually do a privilege escalation? They can go for an auto privilege escalation using get system here. So they can go down over here and say get system and hit enter. Right? It says got the system. Let's see whether it did get the system or not. Hash dump. No, it still didn't get the system. Right? So now we can jump in manually to get the system privilege so we can dump the SAM database. This is that kill chain process of privilege escalation, guys. Okay? So let's go on process PS and look for something that runs on system that normally you wouldn't actually close or your defenses will not go and bother about it. Whitelisted processes. One of a whitelisted process that you can get is SVC host. So look for SVC host that runs on system. Let's say this one, another one, 824. Maybe that's one. SVC host.exe. So I take 824. Now I go down over here and let's see what's my current process ID. My current process ID is 2488. I am in PowerShell. PowerShell will only give you administrator. It can't give you system. So I am now going to go and take that SVC host that we saw just now, um, which is 824, maybe here, system. So I'm going to manually migrate to 824. Hit enter. And once you do that migration, let's check what's our privilege now. We were an administrator privilege, guys, before, right? So now look at what's my privilege. I am on system privilege. The moment I get the system privilege, now I can dump the hash. The moment I get the hash, I can dump it to John the Ripper, another tool to get me the clear user ID and password, right? If, if you want to know what system I'm in, I'm in that Windows server, right? So it's pretty much gives me a complete access and I can do whatever I want. If you're thinking that the malware is in the browser, Clement, so it is still working. No, let's close the browser. Let's close everything that is open and let's open up a notepad for you here just in case, right? So let me type notepad. This is what is a victim machine is, right? Let's go to the hacker machine. Pretty much it's still intact and it works. How do I prove that? He is still connected. Sys info. There you go. He's still connected. No issues. Let's check the process. And we opened up a notepad. Is that it? Here is a notepad that we opened just now. The process ID is 1992. Let's kill 1992. You can actually open kill. You can do anything on it. Kill 1992. The notepad on the other side has been killed. Let's confirm. Let's go to the tab. No more notepad. No more notepad on the victim machine. That's how simple it is, guys. You can do anything. You can actually shut down and you can control that entire machine. Even when the machine comes up again, you will be able to control that machine. You look at this, logging off, shutting off. So a total remote control with persistence, even when you start this machine back again, the machine will automatically connect to the bad guy. The machine is waiting. The bad guy is waiting for the machine to get up. The moment the machine gets up, he'll be still able to connect back over here. A simple attack to show you how by just browsing an infected website or an image that was on the website that can take over your computer and give a complete access to the hacker guys. So this is one. Let me close that up for you. Let me close that up for you. Uh, 
and let me go back a little bit, uh, return back on 99. Uh, you look at this QR code. Okay, now we understand when we are in this COVID-19 scenario, we always scan QR code for tracking purposes. Our Bluetooth are on all the time. Careful on these guys. Scan the QR codes in private places. Don't scan the uh, stuff in public places where there is no security guard or no one near it. There are possible that someone can print a QR code with the malware link and go and stick it in all these public places. Anyone who scan this QR code might get infected. So careful with that stuff, right? I'm not saying not to scan. Be careful. Scan those things that where some security guard or someone is there rather than open places where there is no one around. It can be a malware QR code might be right. So how do you defend your mobile phone? I will leave it pat to cover is about mobile threat defense. OK, so that's one demo over. Uh, what's my time is 148. OK, let me show you the Android demo. OK, now I'm going to actually bring up my mobile phone. Uh, let me check whether my mobile phone is connected and hopefully uh, streaming in. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Pattern opens up. Oh, that's Linus. Okay. Uh, that's all open up over here. So it's pretty much, I'm getting a lot of uh, messages. So on your left, you see my mobile phone. Ignore if any calls comes in, if there's any pop-ups that's coming in, because it's live phone. It's not a test phone my own Samsung Note 10 Plus. If you look at it over here, it's Samsung Note 10 Plus. Not, not rooted, not jailbroken. S Samsung Note 10 Plus, if you go and look at their product brochures, they will tell you it runs on, it runs with the security of eight layers of security by Knox, Samsung Knox. So let's, let's put that into test. Okay, right now. I'm actually taking a Pokemon Go app. You can take any app for that matter. OK, uh, let me actually uh, check. Oh, I have to do a quick stuff. I need to put my machine into public IP. I'm going to bridge it out to the public IP and I'm going to connect to a public IP so that the 3G, 4G of the phone can come looking for the hacker. That's what I'm going to do now, guys. OK, so I have changed my uh, NAT setting to go to public Internet. Uh, I'm now my connection starts at 105 and my router uh, as well as the device that I put out in my router translates it out to a public IP and it goes out. So don't worry about that translation. Um, so let's go on as 105 for now. So let's clear the screen up and let's take it. So I'm going to actually take a, a pretty simple line that you can see up over here. I'm going to actually copy paste this. All right, and I'm going to paste it right over here. So that paste comes up over here. So now you see a very simple line of code. What's happening here is very simple, guys. It is taking any APK file. You can give any APK file. Most of the banking apps in this part of the world that we have tested out don't have any protection. So anyone can take the APK file and they can open up an APK file, any APK file, any bank for that matter, or any APK file. In this case, we have taken Pokemon Go. And you can actually dump a malware inside it and you can package it back and you can upload it back into Google Store. That's exactly what I am doing over here. So I'm actually packaging it up now so that you can now upload this into Google Store. The common mistakes what we do, okay, while I'm actually talking, I'm going to prep the systems because I got the first bell on. Uh, the common mistakes that we do is when we download apps, we do not verify the publisher. We don't verify the publisher. For example, you're looking for an ABC bank app. You just go and actually look for ABC bank. But what happens? You have two results. One is ABC Bank, another one is ABC Bank updated version. You might end up in downloading ABC Bank updated version. So that is a common mistake a lot of us do. So what you have to do is whenever you're downloading an app, please make sure that you are checking the publisher and you are downloading if you don't have enough protection. So right, careful with that guys. Okay, now set the hell host. 192.168.0, sorry, dot 0.105. 
All right, and uh, set the airport. This is for the listener for any any connection that comes in and exploit. So now this is all ready, guys. And you look at the screen that I started up with. The the Pokemon has been infected. It has now been added with a whole lot of permissions inside over here, and it has signed up clearly. And I've got a new Pokemon clone. This will work exactly. So if we have done this for a banking app, the banking app will work exactly. Only thing is, um, only thing is, it's now had extra malware in it. Okay, guys. Now what I'm going to do now is. I'm going to connect my phone. You are still seeing my phone on the side. I'm connecting my phone so that I can connect to the virtual machine and I can copy the file because we don't have time to upload it to Google Store and and then download it, right? So I'm going to copy it over here. So that's what you see over here, Samsung Android over here. I'm connecting to my phone. I'm going to my download. And I'm going to copy this app. This is to simulate that you are downloading from Google Store. But that's all I'm doing. This is to simulate that you are downloading from Google Store. It just comes in over there. It downloads it. And once you copy it, I'm going to remove the cable. You can see that the cable is being removed. OK, and that's copied. Work done. I close this up and I'm going to remove the cable. So you can see that Samsung Android is gone and I remove this cable off. And I leave it over here and I connect back my mouse so I can use my mouse. So over here, exploit on. Now it's a listener. Let's go to my phone on my left. I go to my my files. I have this Pokemon Go. Let me install it. So an assumption that I've downloaded the new Pokemon Go latest version and I'm installing it. Since I did not download it from the Samsung, Samsung will say, oh, you did not download and blah, blah. I said go install anyway. So once I have it here, once it installs, it might ask again for submission for scanning. But again, I have done and open. The moment I open the app, you look at on the left, I open the app, look at on my right. The phone is connected to the hacker machine. Even before you give the allow or deny, the phone is connected to the hacker machine. Now all of these are extra privileges. You can click on allow. Allow, allow, allow as we always do. We don't even read the entire uh, app runs perfect. There's a clone of the original app. OK, so it actually works perfectly all right. But let me show you what can it be done. A lot of us take our mobile phones into our bedrooms and to bathrooms. We can dump call logs, dump contacts, SMS, send SMS, dump SMS, make a phone call. Get a clear webcam stream out of your mobile phone and you can even port forward your SMSs that is coming into your mobile phone. Let me quickly show you one. Let me just dump a call log, right? You can also do a webcam stream, but let's just do a dump call log for this matter because I'm running out of time. So dump call log and hit enter. It has dumped my call log. Let's open this up. Copy and I go and look onto my hacker machine for that call log that has been dropped. And there you go. I open that up. That's my call log that you're going to see, guys. That's my call log of people who called me, right? So if you look at this side of the phone, I can show you my my call log. It will be the exact same. You can see that is the exact same. Right as you can see over here. So right, so it's pretty much has dumped my entire call log. So I can do anything I want over here on your mobile phone. Your mobile phone is totally compromised. And physically you're having your mobile phone in the hand. Digitally someone is controlling it, right? So how do you protect your mobile phone? Listen to Pat later. He will talk about Zimperium and its mobile threat defense. How to protect your mobile phone because antivirus might not cut it right so that's a quick few demos that i wanted to show you on my side i have and we have five minutes left um, to go at two o'clock okay so we have five minutes left to go to the next session so i will hand over this to uh mira mira you have five minutes uh to show them that online uh for uh, online shopping buddy mira over to you uh thank you clement 
So let me share my screen. You have to speed up a little bit, Mira. Okay. Thank you. So let me share my screen. So uh, as a hacker, when he works from home, he wants to buy a phone. So he, he how he uses a website, which is full of vulnerability to buy an iPhone. I'm going to show a website. This is a Bangladesh uh, online shopping website, which is jadju.com. It is a vulnerable website. Why is it vulnerable? Let me show you guys. So let's say I'm going to buy an iPhone. So go to mobile phones. iPhone. Okay, iPhone XS, view product, gold is available stock. Okay, add to cart. Okay, go to cart. Okay, we have already added our iPhone XS to our shopping cart. So now I'm going to proceed to checkout. So just fill in a random name. It's a very random name and a random phone number. So this three, because it's a Bangladesh, I'm going to choose Dhaka. Area will be Dhaka Cantonment. Address, I'm going to put Shangri-La Hotel. Okay, so this is the way to pay your iPhone. So I'm going to use SSL Commerce. SSL Commerce is to pay via online if cash on delivery and your mobile phone is only one daka the delivery person going to know about it so pay with card to play safe you have to choose this way okay okay so now we are already in the payment bridge so here so here it begins the the uh, begins the attacking mode so I'm using burp suit to to do so net banking before choosing the bank I'm going to burp suit set this on okay on sorry sorry this on okay guys. So, sorry for the delay. Um, Mira, you are actually keep the intercept on and then click on AB Bank. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Clement. Sorry, guys, for the for the error. So <clears throat> now I'm going to change the product price. The actual product price is. <coughs> uh, 134k so i'm going to reduce to 60 daka so just go here bring this up and forward then yes so now can you guys see the price has reduced to 60 daka so this is how a vulner vulnerable website can be used by hackers to for their own goods Okay, Mira. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. So, so we have seen a very simple payment gateway kind of an uh, stuff where uh, where someone can actually uh, alter the prices to buy. A lot of websites around the world has been impacted by that. Okay, by with that we have come to the end of uh, a quick like 30-40 minutes live hacking. I'm gonna actually. Uh, I'll pass it to the next presenter. Thank you guys. Any questions? Drop it in in the chat and we will pick all of those questions and we'll answer that uh, in the end of today. Thank you guys.